Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a Bible share or a video commentary share called File Mine Thinker. So this is basically the sequel or part two to the other video that I did about the vile therapist. So it's about this therapist that actually needs therapy. And uh, she's a black therapist that doesn't really like her clients that much. And her clients are black black men, generally black men. Well, she said she walked it back a bit and said it's black women. But she's actually a therapist of black men, too. And she hates black men or she has a strong dislike for black men. And it really comes across in her videos. Anyhow, anyhow, she's made a fool of herself. They may have had a little bit of a word with her and therefore now she's trying to walk it back a little bit. So now she's trying to walk it back back a little bit because she they've now kicked her out of her little job that she had as a therapist because they realised that she wasn't very sympathetic towards her clients. So now she's trying to walk it back a bit and trying to uh, show some sense of uh, professionalism. So as you can see, her breasts are not hanging down in this one. You know, she, her top is covered up. She's wearing shorts, <laughs> but her breast is all covered up and she's trying to look professional and sound professional. But let's see how far this professionalism continues. Hello, I would like to make a video addressing my recent video um, calling for men to go to therapy. Now, I will say that firstly, I would like to apologize for the colorful language that I used, but I want to express where I'm coming from. So as a clinician, my job is not to make people change. My job is to plant seeds and help my clients water the soil and cultivate it so they have a thriving environment to grow. That is my job. Now, from a human standpoint, I entered this field because I saw a dire need for black mental health and black mental health professionals, because I was not always met with support. So I apologize to individuals if you felt like my language was colorful, but I want you to know more deeply where I come from. A few people have called into question my blackness, which is to be expected. Um, my personhood is questioned quite often. I chose to go into mental health because only 4% of clinicians are black, yet there's 13% of black individuals in America. So there's already a huge disparity. And I have made it my life's work to help fill that gap. Now where my frustration comes in is I called for individuals to do better, but then my job got doxxed. I understand that people may not agree with my delivery or the things that I'm saying, but a major boundary has been crossed. Of course, of course, we don't agree with your delivery. Your delivery was off because your complete and utter disregard towards your clients, which are black men is disrespectful and these men are coming to you at their most vulnerable and they're telling you things about themselves that they don't normally say to anybody else and and they are looking to you for guidance they're not looking for you to come online and ridicule them and make fun of them and then because they're black men Oh, and because they're black men and you hate black men, it gives you a right to come online and, and just make fun of black men and disrespect black men. When you're a therapist, there's a certain amount of empathy that you have to have for your clients. And I'm afraid what this woman has shown is that she's not very professional and doesn't have the empathy that, that is needed to be a therapist. Being a therapist is a very, very crucial role, especially in our community, with all the, the craziness that's going on in our community. But when you use your position 
to ridicule black men and make fun of black men. And then afterwards, you try to walk it back as if like we didn't see all those videos when you were just literally turning your backside and saying you want some of this uh, and, and just trying to be vitriolic towards black men. I'm so passionate in my words because I'm tired of seeing men suffer. I'm tired of seeing you guys endure so much hurt and so much trauma and refusing to do anything about it when you guys have the power to do it. As a clinician, my job is to motivate and empower and it came across angry and aggressive because as a black woman, I'm also tired of being hurt. I'm tired of being hurt by the very, I'm tired of being hurt by the very entity that I love the most, which is the black man. I have made it my life's work, dedicated myself to encouraging and uplifting black people, especially the black man. But my words came across very, very spicy because you guys are dying whether it be gun violence, whether it be you guys killing each other, whether it be you guys killing yourselves, because you endure a lot. And I see that because I am your other half. I am your partner. I am your equal. I am not your enemy. Despite the words that I used, I want you guys to understand that my message is clear. You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to grow. You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to move and shift as a person. But sometimes you cannot do that shit alone. If you're a black man and you still rely on this woman as being a therapist, you need your head testing. And if you're a black woman and you and you rely on this woman as a therapist, you need your head testing. This woman is a vile piece of work. Absolutely vile. She's trying her best to walk it back somewhat just because she knows that she made herself look stupid. Men depression rates are skyrocketing. Men's suicide rates are skyrocketing. I'm not making these statistics, I'm just drawing light on this topic. Forgive me if I seem passionate in my words. I'm only passionate because I'm tired of seeing black men die. I cannot articulate the feeling Okay, so let's see if she's pretending and she really genuinely means it. Maybe she does genuinely mean it. Maybe, maybe she has saw the light. Maybe she's, she wants to believe in God now and she wants to repent and change her ways. And she wants to be a nice person because she's been found out. Because everybody's been telling her how vile she is. And now she wants to walk it back. Let's have a look and see whether this is the case. Of the perpetual trauma that I have experienced, that black men have experienced, that I am beyond tired of seeing. I have children who cry in session because they wonder why their dads didn't show up to their birthday. I have teenagers who don't feel important because they didn't have someone to tell them that they love them. They didn't have that strong male support to make them feel like they're okay. And I'm only coming from a place because I didn't have that. Now, she's piling on the tears. I mean, I'm not going to show the bit where she's really piling on the tears because uh, it's it's a bit, there's a fair bit of fakery going on. Um, she's just trying to impress her bosses. That's all it is. But what, we, what we're now going to do is we're going to show a few more of the clips that I believe came after this. And we'll judge for ourselves whether she's a chained soul or not. Hey, yo, stitch this and tell me what's some dumb shit that you keep doing. I'll go first. Dating. Because what the fucking point is the fucking point? Like, I walk out my house looking fine as fuck. Smelling good. Looking good. Tasting motherfucking good. And I just keep encountering these dusty motherfuckers. By the way, she's doubling down on the foul behavior and the foul language and the vile behavior and the unattractive masculine, uh, ultra mas masculine, negative masculine behavior. And uh, she thinks somehow that's going to attract her a decent man. Decent men get put off by this. Pig better men, where the fuck are y'all at? 
Pig better men, where the fuck are y'all at? Pig better men, where the fuck are y'all at? Pig better men, where the fuck are y'all at? I somehow think that the men are avoiding you, especially if you're this crazy. And quite frankly, I can't blame them. I'm going fucking clinically insane in this bitch. Trying to fucking date. That shit's fucking exhausting. Pig better men, where the fuck are y'all at? I'm going fucking clinically insane in this bitch. Trying to fucking date. That shit's fucking exhausting. Actually, you know what? Motherfuckers don't even want to date no more. They literally like pick you up and go like eat in the car. Bitch, that's not fucking romantic. It's not a goddamn date. You being on fucking FaceTime 24-7 is not fucking romantic. It's not intimacy. Bitch, you have a lot of time on your hands. That's what that fucking means. <laughs> you buying me a $50 dinner is not gonna guarantee you eating my asshole. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> I want somebody to touch my son. If you black men still want to choose this woman after this woman has shown you in video after video after video that she can't stand you, if you still think, oh, well, it's just, I'll just be the brother that she really, really likes. Uh, she, I'll be the brother that breaks her. That it'll break her and she'll now be a decent person again. She's not going to be no decent woman again. What you see is what you're going to get. So I'm telling you now, brothers, before you go dipping your toes in that water, she's actually telling you the water is not very good. And therefore, don't even go tipping your toes in that water because what you're going to get is burns. Stay away from this woman. Actually, you know what? Motherfuckers don't even want to date no more. They literally like pick you up and go like eat in the car. Bitch, that's not fucking romantic. It's not a goddamn date. You being on fucking FaceTime 24-7 is not fucking romantic. It's not intimacy. Bitch, you have a lot of time on your hands. That's what that fucking means. <laughs> you buying me a $50 dinner is not going to guarantee you eating my asshole. It's not going to happen. I want somebody to touch my stuff. So the problem with this type of behavior is that as you get older and older, the dates dry up, right? Because when the men see your character especially a man who is who wants to settle down he wants to have a family and he wants a wife that he is a is a wife you know he's not some you know some young guy that you know who's just coming up and is just looking for a good time you know he wants a wife he wants to lay down a legacy he's increasingly not going to be looking for a woman that is loud-mouthed someone who is uh, disrespectful, non-compliant. He's going to be looked for a submissive, kind, loving woman. That's what he's going to be looking for. So it's fun when you're in your early 20s, when you're in the prime of life. But as you get further into your 20s and 30s, especially your mid 30s, it gets harder and harder for you to justify this type of behavior. And unfortunately, unfortunately, because of the, the society that we live in, the culture that we live in, it encourages uh, both men and women to be per perpetual children forever and ever and ever. Now, obviously, men and women are different, right? So we expect our women to be submissive and kind and to be good mothers and good wives, right? To, uh, to us being the provider and, and, and being the protector of our families. And what a lot of men are waking up and seeing is that a lot of what they're seeing is not worthy of protecting or providing for. Now, let's go to Sira 26 and we're going to read from 13 to 15. The grace of a wife delighted her husband and her discretion will fatten his bones. Right. So a wife is a very, very wonderful gift to have right a beautiful beautiful well-structured woman a woman that knows how to speak she's not argumentative overtly argumentative just for the sake of it she's not loud she's not condescending and she's just not a pain in the bum 
right? She it says the grace of a wife delighted her husband and her discretion will fatten his bones. So she needs to be someone that he can rely on, right? Someone he can trust, right? 14, a silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. So if in order to attract a good man, you need to be silent and loving. Your character can't be just all out there like you're just all out there in people's faces and you're just stripping off naked half naked and and have your breasts hanging down and and just looking like like a fool like a clown right that's not going to attract a good husband all it's going to attract is whoremongers that are just going to use you for sex so let's read again a silent and loving woman is a gift of the lord and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed so when a woman is silent and loving her mind is well instructed because she understands that her being a wife depends on the way and her character, the way she carries herself, the way she treats her man, the way she reacts, her discretion, right? Being feminine is to be quiet and loving, quiet spirited and loving, quietly spoken and loving. That's why the Lord created gave the Adam's apple to the man so he has a booming voice because yeah, men have louder voices women have softer voices for a reason because she's supposed to be quieter right so it says a silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed 15 a shame-faced and faithful woman is a double grace now shame-faced just goes into she's not high-minded she doesn't want to be at the front she doesn't want to be dominating the conversation. She doesn't want to be, oh, look at me, look at me, look at me. What about me? What about what what about me? What about me? She is shame faced. Normally I would say shy. But really, it's not really talking about shy, shy. Right? It's talking about someone who is consciously wants to be submissive and wants to be humble. And faithful woman. So woman that is faithful, that goes along with being trustworthy. If you're a man and you have to travel the world to go on business trips, to make money, to provide for your family, you want to you want to be, have the full confidence that she's going to be faithful. You know, you're leaving a wife in the home who is going to be faithful to you. She's not going to say, oh, goody, he's gone now. So now I can go and be a whore and I can go from I can bounce from bed to bed to bed to bed or I can start texting someone. A man that I've just seen or a man, man from the old, my ex-boyfriend or, or, or a man that I've seen uh, down the road. I can text him and start flirting with him. No, he wants a faithful woman is a double grace. So a shame faced a woman that is humble, submissive. That goes into shame faced It goes being being humble and submissive and faithful woman is a double grace and her continent mind cannot be valued. So her well structured mind cannot be valued because it's invaluable right that is the epitome of value right it is the epitome of greatness what more does a man want but a silent and loving woman that is faithful that is trustworthy that is that is intelligent has wisdom all of those characteristics you need to exhibit if you're looking for a husband if you're going on dates and your personality that people normally justify their wicked personality, their evil personality, they go, oh, this is me. You want me to be somebody else? I'm just being myself. Yeah, but being you is wicked. Being you is like the worst person in the world. Being you is like looking at poison alive. It's like looking at a snake just moving around. <laughs> being you is not wife material. That's the problem. So if you're wondering why your dates don't last or your relationships don't last, it's because of you. <laughs> right? The Bible says that we should repent. Right? Repentance is open to everybody. Right? Regardless if you are a whatever you are, repentance is open to you. So we need to confess our sins one to another, confess our sins ultimately to God in prayer, and then ask for forgiveness and healing we need to go on fasting and prayers so that we can get rid of the demons that's inside of us right and so that we can do better 
right? We can be cleansed, right? Prayer, fasting, so that we can get rid of that demon, right? That's how we solve that situation, right? Now, right, let's just move on to the next verse. So it says, so it's 16, as the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of the house. So this is hidden buttons that is hurting hearts, <laughs> right? These are the buttons that women don't like being pressed, <laughs> right? Because it, the Bible is clearly saying that it says, as the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, which is a beautiful sight, so is the beauty of a good wife. So to, in order to be a good wife, you must be ordering the home, right? So it says in the ordering of the home. It means exactly what it means. It means that you're supposed to take care of the home. You're supposed to manage your house, manage the house that you live in, that your husband is running, right? Manage his household while he's at work. You're supposed to be managing his household by cooking, cleaning, doing the laundry and generally taking care of the home. So he takes care of the bills. He provides for his family, at least the lion's share of his family. Uh, for the li lion's share of his family, he provides for or he provides 100% for everybody. Right. And as a woman, you're supposed to be ordering the home. It means exactly what it means. It means taking care of the home. Now, when you say that, it hurts feelings because a lot of women, uh, because they've been brought up on a diet, of saying, well, well, you're a female, you can have have it all. You can have a career, you can have a family, you can have a this, you can have a that. You can have it how you want it, right? You're an independent woman, you don't need no man, right? So you've been brought up in a diet of that. So now you 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 crave marriage, right? You don't understand marriage because you like the idea of having a husband and being married, but you don't really want to be a wife. So now when you marry this guy or think about getting married to this guy, then you realize, oh, you mean I have to give up my independence? You mean I have to give up the life that I know now? It means that I have to work. I have to I have to cook your meals and have children and do housework. I don't really want to do that. I don't really want to put myself through that. So that's what's going on today in our culture today is that people are so numb to sin and so confused with all the gender and sexual confusion that they don't really want to do what they were made to do in the first place. So the Bible is very clear. It says in 16, as the sun, when it ariseth in the high heaven, which is a very beautiful sight. So is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her home. So if you're not a good wife, it means that you're not doing the housework. Right. So if you if you say, well, I, where's a 50 50, you know, and you don't you hardly do any housework or you do 50 percent, you, you do shared roles, then you're not a good wife. Being a good wife means that you're ordering the home for your husband. All of these things are not very common and not very, not things that are very common and people like hearing, especially females. They don't like hearing that kind of stuff. But all of these things is what a good man is looking for in a wife. But if you can barely keep your mouth shut enough to get past a date <laughs> for more than once, then the chances of you finding a man and settling down and getting married are very, very slim. And as you age, it gets slimmer and slimmer for a woman. Right? It gets slimmer and slimmer for a woman because men are generally looking for women that can have their children and are quiet, spirited, submissive, kind, reliable, faithful, trustworthy and all of that good stuff. And they order the home. There's no arguments in order the home. There's no 50-50. There's no shared roles. There, She takes her responsibility very seriously. Ordering the home and raising children and taking care of her husband. So really the daughters of Zion uh, who want to get married should be aiming to be virtuous. And being virtuous means being submissive. Right? Brothers and sisters, I hope you were edified. Shalom.